Hello everybody, glad you could make it. My name is Kayleigh Allen and welcome to today's video. Our sponsor for today's video is Squarespace. If you are not in the know, Squarespace is an all-in-one solution to build and run your own brand online, whether that be a brochure website or even an online shop. But more on that later in the video. There's some, there's some stuff going on here, right? So if you watched my video last week, you will get the update on my frame right now, which if you can't tell, that's my living wall behind me. So I'm not gonna talk about that in today's video because I've done it in last week's. So if you'd like to see that, please watch the beginning of last week's video where I actually show you all the different bits on the wall. I have some arrows, as you can probably tell. I don't have that many, actually. This one here, can you see him? Yeah, he's a bit floppy because this needs this leaf's a little bit new and he's, he's having a bit of a moment, but he is, what is he? Philodendron pastazan in white, I think, can you tell? It's got a lot of silver on it, essentially. A lot of silver, I mean a lot of silver. Can you see that? He's very, very pretty boy. Over here, I have what I believe is a Philodendron plamanii, right here. I have more than one, though. I do actually have one down here, like so. He's not looking very good. I'm going to be honest with you. He's looking a little bit beat up and he's not very silver. He's like silverless. And I have a selection of Gloriosum. Some of them have grown into two pots. As you'll see, there are roots all over the table. So I have him. I have another one here that has grown forward as well. It's a separate plant. And then I've got this cute guy here with a lot of white veinage. I did have some others. I mean, I did have some others. I have a shop full of these things, literally. But I picked these out today to pot them in order to put them up in the studio. So the plants you're looking at now should hopefully make a bit of a revamped studio upstairs, but basically my camera frame, because I will try and do some more videos upstairs. Obviously, this looks amazing. Amazing. I'm going to be doing more videos in front of this as well. So get used to it. If you don't like it, you're stuck with it. Although who could not like that, honestly? Right, so these plants are looking very, very pale right now. They are literally directly under a softbox. If you can see where my hand is, that's super white because where the softbox is. I'm going to take these off the table and I'm going to pot them one by one. So I have today, I have a lot, but I don't know how many we're going to use, but I have basically these. These are El Ho self watering pots and I have a few of each. I have this size here. For the smaller ones, ah, uh, how big is this? It's saying 17 centimeters for these. And these ones here are 21 centimeters. So these are considerably bigger. Not many will go into these. I think this guy right here will. Actually, this guy will. Probably the guy down there will. The rest of them should go into the smaller ones. Let's hope. I feel like we should start with an easy one. I don't know. Maybe we could start with a pretty one. What do we think? You know what, I'm calling it. We're gonna do an easy one first. So if you don't know how this goes, I have to essentially assemble the self-watering insert, which is here, and then pot the plant. I'm gonna be putting a lot of these plants in pond. I'm gonna start mixing lecker with the pond because I don't have a ton of pond, if I'm honest. So I'll probably do lecker on the bottom, perhaps, maybe a bit of pond, and then finish off with lecker again, just depending on what is required. So I think that should work. Hopefully I've got enough substrate. Look at the state, look at the state, literally. Good hack though, if you're gonna propagate Gloriosum. I didn't do this deliberately by the way it has just grown across two pots there is actually another royal some stump in here but it's a very good hack either have a few pots or you could do like a long pot and do it that way but it's definitely a good hack if you just think oh god i have not got time to repot this but it's going to grow over the side of the pot like this get another pot put substrate in it whether that's pond lecker whatever whatever your poison is and put it like that and it will give you some time so you you don't have to repot it and you can effectively either propagate it or just keep growing it so totally your choice but that's a good hack look at this by the way guys this is gonna be a nightmare when it comes to repotting this this one look at the roots but two look at this weird ass shape i feel like i'm gonna have to support this somehow i don't really know he's beautiful though look at that if you want to know how gorgeous he is look at that he almost looks blue compared to everyone else he's nice Right, so I'm going to put him down as well. He's still a little bit wonked and his new leaf is still a little bit floppy, so he's a little bit difficult to position, whereas this guy is just rigid as hell. Look at that. It's another Plowmanii, I do believe. Looking a lot different. And honestly, I've got a ton of Plowmanii. I've got some Mammy as well, and they all look so different. It's such a variable plant, I cannot even tell you. Either that, or there's different forms and I'm not privy to it, but I have some with like super silver on, I have some with hardly any on, I've got some with more of a corrugated effect. Let me go grab another one I've got off camera now and I'll show you what I mean. Because I don't know if people talk about this online or not actually. Sorry, I know you can hear me clear as day and I'm not actually there, it's quite fun. So I'll pick up these two, because I might even pop one, I'm not sure yet. Right, that's a plow money eye on camera there, right? And you can kind of see it there, that's a new leaf. I have this one here, 
which is really, really round in shape and it has quite nice ridges on it and it's got quite a lot of silver on it, right? So I've got that one there. And this one, believe it or not, this is the Plowman Eye as an offcut from that guy. So this guy is this guy here. I quite like that. And he's showing silver, which might mean, and yes, I am figuring this out as we go, because I'm not a plow money eye expert, to be honest, but it might mean that the silver disappears with maturity. But even then, I think we can agree that this and this are different. And I think I'm correct in saying that Mame are the um, climbing ones, which I know I have up there. I have some stuff that looks like this, but it's climbing vertically. I would love to pull it out of the pot. I don't think I'm going to get it out. I'll try for you now and see if I can tell you, show you what I'm on about. Because as nice as these repots are, it's nice to be able to kind of just show you new things really, isn't it? Right, this one isn't good looking by any means, right? It's actually been left at the top of the shop. It's been recently moved down. It needs fed. It needs a lot of things. This here, there. That's growing upwards. That's never been a crawler. It's never tried to be a crawler. This one here is a crawler. Now, if you're interested in me finding out the scoop on this plant and getting back to you and making a quick video on it, let me know. I will let you know what I know. But as far as I know, this is Mame, I think, and this is Plum Money Eye. Could be wrong. That's what I understand from it because we do still have rippled petioles. These are very red as well. That's another difference I can tell you. Look how red that is. Can you see that? Sorry, I can't really bring it up to the camera, but I think you can see how red they are. This guy's just, he's green, isn't he? Yeah, he's green with a red petiole insertion, I think. So they are very different. And even across, you know, all of these, they still behave differently. So really, really weird. I'm going to put him back really quickly because I'll forget where he goes. Needless to say, by the way, the same thing can be said for Gloriosome, for example. Again, I know it's taken a while. I'll pick him up because he's only got one pot. This guy is clearly different from this guy, right? This is what I think is known as white vein or zebra or whatever, and this isn't. And then you get rounder forms, which I think I have upstairs. That's the big one. This dark form, which I think is on the wall. He just looks a bit more normal looking now. So I might be bullshitting you there, but you get a few different forms. And again, I need to find out the T on that because I've noticed that there is a chart online that exists for the Gloriosome forms, right? And I have a lot of Gloriosome here. Trust me, I have a lot. And from my findings, my findings uh, contradict the chart quite a bit, which I think is interesting in terms of like petiole shapes and whether it's pink back or not, whether it's got veins, all that sort of stuff. So it'd be really cool to do a video on that too. And believe it or not, I've been thinking about making that video for the last nine months. Just haven't got around to it, but I will. I just need to start documenting the growth of these things more and working it out a little bit. But if I did do that, it'll be in the style of the, you know, how to keep your ghost white video, I think. Oh, that's me kicking liquor about. Great. Awesome. So, as I mentioned at the start of the video, we're going to depot him soon and we're going to rebuild this guy. Now, today's repot is more of a typical repot than the last couple that I've done. First repot was absolute chaos. The last repot was a life update, which if you are curious, then you can look at last week's video. You'll find out everything I've been up to and everything else in that one. And then this week's, which is your normal Q&A repot. If you're looking for a convenient way to create and run your own website, then Squarespace could be exactly what you're looking for. Squarespace is your one-stop shop to create your own website from the ground up using a selection of stylish and super customizable templates. It's super easy to make changes to one of these templates and make it your own. I can quickly create a new website, choose a template that I like and get started making edits. Once I'm done with everything and I hit save, my dashboard shows the second website. So now I can simply switch between the two websites whenever I want to change what I'm working on. No need to make multiple accounts. If you want to create a really sleek looking website, either for yourself or perhaps you're setting up a web shop like mine, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's it from me. Back to the video. Right, first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to build this. This, as I mentioned before, is the l Hall self-watering insert, and this is size 17. This is very, very nice. And honestly, a lot of the plants I sell from my shop, if they've got a really strong root system, like a lot of roots, it's quite root heavy, this size pot is very good for it. And I like this size specifically because, hang on, because I always find that it's difficult to get pots that aren't, you know, like 10, 12 centimeters 
you have that and it, it's hard to get the in-betweenies and I do consider these to be in-betweenies. When your plant grows out of a 12 centimeter pot, I honestly think you could pot up to a 17. So I really, really like them. They're great for anthurium to be honest when they arrive because anthurium roots are ridiculous. Philodendrons, they need to be a little bit more mature. Like that might be arguably a little bit small for that, but I might try it anyway. I think we probably can and I'll try and pot it in a certain way. So this is slightly big for this plant, but we're gonna do it anyway. Okay, come on mate. You know what I'm like. And again, honestly, plants can handle more than you think they can. It's one of these things where because we spend a lot of money on plants, we, we baby them quite a lot, but not even because we spend money on them. I shouldn't say that. Just because we care a lot and we mother our plants a lot, we, we think, we get into the, the trap of thinking that they can't handle things and they can. They literally can. They want to live. You know, don't drown them. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't put them next to a, you know, AC unit. Don't put them in direct sun. But generally speaking, the rest will work itself out. Obviously, just keep clearing them for pests. You'd be surprised how low maintenance plants can be. And honestly, if you do struggle with stuff like that, I genuinely suggest self-watering pots. As long as you nail the substrate inside the pot, you're fine. I mean, obviously, water the pot. But you, you're absolutely fine, so. I do genuinely recommend these. Yes, one of your questions were, for this video was a review on them. I'm gonna start planning that now. Um, tomorrow, actually. I'm gonna edit to these videos today. And then we'll start planning that tomorrow, along with a few things. So I can't tell you exactly when that's coming out, but it, it will. I wanted to do maybe a brand review, but I might just do, I might literally just make it, you know, El Ho versus Lechuza and do it that way. I haven't really had any experience with any other self-warring pots. There is some really shitty ones I bought off Amazon. I can't see them here, but I used to have a really old pot from them. I didn't rate them. So for me, those are the only two brands that I've ever used that I like, but I will get that video to you. So. You're asking me, I hear you, I'm gonna do it, but I will probably do it in, you know, which versus which and what I like best and the pros and cons. I think we'll do it that way. Right, I'm just gonna build this, put the little polystyrene ball in here, if you can see. Basically that sits in here and then this straw sits on top of it and that's your buoyancy. So when the meter is full, the straw will rise. And if I just pop this in here, then you can see this little line here. Hopefully you can see. There's a min and a max there, and that's how it works. These are a little bit more difficult to fit these. You kind of gotta, you need some, a little bit of elbow grease sometimes. What was that? Was it lecker? Oh my goodness. So you pop this little attachment on the bottom, push it up as far as you can. That's the wrong way around, Kaylee. Try and take that off now. I put it on the wrong way around, there we go. There's a little slot that you're not gonna be able to see on this video, I appreciate it. There's a little slot on the bottom that you just push into and sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's really not today looks like it might not be oh no that was good now stickers you should probably take them off but i tell you now i'm probably not gonna because it's a pain in the ass and they don't come off properly but i've heard a lot of people say oh my god take the stickers off because like the stuff stuck to the plastics can like leach into your water and it's really bad i've never had that problem i'm not advocating for necessarily not taking them off take them off if you want to take them off but honestly no one's gonna see them and in my experience one when you do pull stickers off that happens two I've never had it happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying I've never had it happen. And I put all kinds of shit in these pots, guys. I have upstairs, I have a Delta Force in one of these pots. I think I have a Delta Force down here or are they both upstairs? I think I've got, I've got a cutting going and I've got the mother going. Um, they're just in these, they haven't had the stickers pulled off. If I'm willing to put a Delta Force in it, I think you can take it from me. I've never had any problems, but yeah, if you want to take them off, take them off. It's just, can you even get them off without ripping? Let me test for you actually, because if they come off without ripping, then you may as well pull them off, right? Let's just see if they come off. Oh, to be fair, this looks like it's coming off. I think it's just my shitty stickers from the nursery that aren't coming off. Oh, it's noisy. No, look at that, it's coming off fine. So yeah, okay, so maybe take them off because it's pure laziness if you don't. But so that's that. Just lining the bottom with lecker just to give it a bit more, I don't know, a bit more grit. And also to make my substrate go further. I do sometimes mix the two substrates together for certain plants. And again, that will be a video. I think I want to do a video on, you know, what's better, pon, lecker, mixing them, what's the tea. I think I really want to do that as well. So I'm going to do that. I'll be planning that as well. Can you tell I've got a lot of videos to plan? Right, I'm actually going to put a tiny bit of pon over the top. 
just to kind of fill in the holes. You probably could just do lecker in these, and I have had success just doing lecker in them. But again, this, like down here, it'd be absolutely wonderful, no problems, because I can grow these in lecker down here. But up there, it's just, I don't know what it is. It's it's all part of the same, you know, unit. It's all open. But because heat rises and there's the big windows over there, it just gets a bit, it's weird, it doesn't get drier, because it's the same humidity. If anything, sometimes it's more humid up there. But things just seem to be drier. Do you know what I mean? I think plants just take it up too fast. I don't know. But anyway, let's get this out and then we will actually start the topics now, shall we? So one of your questions was the horse situation. That's in the last video, so we don't need to cover that. First one on my list is Hoya updates. And I have that planned for you. I think you'll get that really soon, actually. That might be one of the next few ones I film. A little update on the Hoya they got kind of neglected a lot. <laughs> ben won't go anywhere near them because he doesn't like Hoya and he doesn't know how to deal with Hoya. So a lot of the times, and I mentioned this in my last video, me going backwards and forwards from the unit wasn't that often. And what would often happen was just things get neglected. I can't, I can't get to it all, right? It's a huge unit. We're at, a, I don't know how many thousand plants we're at now. I think last year it was like six or seven thousand. There must be another three thousand maybe. I've never counted. I didn't try. I don't want to know how many there are, but I don't get to everything obviously. So the Hoya have had a, a bit of shit. I think I've lost one or two. I nearly lost my silver polyneura, but I think I took a cutting at the last second and I think I've saved it. But generally, they're not looking as good as they should. Now, the higher upstairs are doing much better, funny enough, because they seem to like being toasted to death. They're not doing amazingly, don't get me wrong. It's not exactly a, you know, an Instagram show up there, but they're doing all right. So I will update you on those soon. I mean, I'm looking at them now. They're all on one shelf. They look kind of green. They look pretty good. I've got some propagations of those higher as well because I was trying to test how to propagate higher. You know, would they work in here in Lecker and stuff like that? How fast do they grow? Blah, blah, blah. So I might show you those at the time as well. I'll pull some out and I'll show you when I next film that. So long story short, you will get that update. So if anyone's curious as to all those higher I bought and what they look like, there you go. So I'm just having a little look at these roots, which honestly, they're very, very good. There was one that looked a little bit rotty, but the rest are fine. Some of these are a bit of a darker brown. There's a tiny bit of rot, but I mean a tiny bit of rot. It was almost like one root has rotted, and these are all absolutely fine. So that's really nice. Root-wise for this pot, because I know you guys said you want me to talk more about what I'm doing. So what I'm thinking here is, it's certainly all right. There's not going to be any damage here as long as I don't do an absolutely stupid, which I'm not going to. I think that's a reasonable amount for this pot. It's probably perfect, actually, in terms of repotting a little bit earlier than usual and having a good amount of time for the plant to grow in. I would probably say this is perfect. Now, what I am going to do is, I normally like to decide where I'm going to put my self-watering meter. I'll do that before I pot. Now, the meter faces forward, and that's the best place to read it, but you can read it from the back and blah, 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 blah. So obviously you can position this either this way or the other way when you feed it through. It has to be one of the two ways. It's just how it clicks in. So it's lined like this. I can't align it like that, for example, which is, I guess, a con over a chooser because the chooser, it, it doesn't matter which way you view it from, right? So there's one thing. There's a little sneak peek. But given that the way these um, Philodendron Gloriosum grow, if you don't know, they don't vine upwards. Hence why we're here today. They grow along a surface like this. So this is the next leaf here. This is how it grows. It will grow horizontally. So what I would like to do is regardless of this, I don't give a shit. I want to pot it somewhere where it has the most time to grow across this pot, right? And that's what that's how I will get the best out of it. And when I do that, I will point it so that that's at the front or whatever have you. Although I can honestly imagine when it's sat up there on a shelf, it's gonna get a bit weird a bit quickly just due to the way the light hits the room. But we'll see, we'll see how it goes. So that's what I'm gonna do. So I might actually leave this meter here and actually do it this way. So obviously this is where it's gonna grow from. This is the newest, you know, the new stuff comes over here. So I'm actually gonna plant it, but I'm going to plant it to what would be Near, nigh on the back of the pot, right? So it is going to look a bit weird, but I'm going to do that with the knowledge that it's going to grow that way a little bit more. Now, I'm already thinking about changing the rotation of the pot, and I'll talk you through why I'm thinking about this. So this is going to go on a shelf, if you imagine staring into the corner of a room, right? Um, so pretend there's a there's a corner here, right? As you might know, I have some shelves here, I have some shelves here, and then I have like a palm in between. So I think, I think, this chlorosin is probably going to go on one of these shelves. But my windows are over here. So what might happen is the plant's going to start growing that way. Not a lot I can do about it. So what I should maybe try not to do is let that get in the way of that, right? And I'll just have to keep rotating the pot. 
So I'm probably going to do it that way. That now makes the most sense to me. Now, obviously, the plant's grown a bit backwards. That's just how it's grown in the shop. But I think that's what I'm going to settle on. I think we're going to do it that way. And that makes the most sense to me. So I'm going to put some pond in. And then once I'm confident I've covered most of it, I will put some lecker on. And I will focus the lecker more around here because you don't want to really submerge this part here if you can help it. A little bit is okay. And especially when you are using things like pond, it's nowhere near as bad. You can probably submerge half of it if you wanted. Um, but you'd be very careful when you do this to not do that. That's a new bud right there. Very nice. I hope it actually comes to fruition. Right. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do it that way. And that is how we're going to have this. So I'll leave him there and I'll get some porn out. I hope that made sense, by the way. It's not something I've ever explained before, so I might not be super articulate at it. So I'm going to put that closer to the back of the pot here than the front of the pot here, just so it has time to grow forward effectively. Although I can foresee this plant growing a bit funky. But we're doing all we can. And pour that in. That's more or less a full, full thing. I'm planting it a little bit low and then I will basically pick it up and pull it out of the substrate a little bit more. And he's not looking too terrible. Right. At the minute, I'll show you what I've got from the side here. Can you tell? I don't want to tip him too much. That's how he's growing. Again, this looks stupid. So what needs to happen is he probably needs to go up there and sit for a little bit before I rearrange him so he can at least move himself around. He might look silly on the day that we do rearrange him, but in time he will look a little bit better. In fact, I will probably place him on the shelf like that on the day so he looks good. So I'm leaving him like that. All that's above the soil and I'm just going to put on a little bit of liquor over the top. It should stabilize the plant a little bit because it's not super stable. I've just planted it and it's it needs, you know... You'll know this if you plant plants all the time. It needs like a week or two, doesn't it, to really get cemented in. In fact, I think a week usually does it. Always always do things before you need them. That's the best best advice I could give you. Right, so we'll just put that like that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the tiniest bit more liquor. So you probably can't see this very well. This is now slightly submerged, but it's okay and it's liquor and it's dry and I don't have an issue with it, to be honest. And once the plant is a little bit more stable, I can maybe move that a little bit further away. But for now, I think it's really good to stabilize it while it grows in. So loads of dust all over these leaves. Needs a good feed, which I will be doing at some point um, on camera, probably at the end. So you will see that if you're interested. I hate this. You get pawn in the little feed reservoir and it really irritates me. I'm not going to put him in his outer pot. I do have them, but they're over there and there's no point because I'm going to put this on the floor now anyway because we've done it. There's no point. But again, I will at the end, so you'll see the outer pot if you haven't seen it before. Although I'm sure most of you have by now. Certainly not new, these pots. I've been using them for a long ass time. Right, I really want to do this silver guy, but I'm a bit scared in case I do something really bad. Let's get a big pot and then we will decide what to do. I'm thinking that really pretty silver guy, I think he's going to look absolutely stunning. So I might want to try him. So we've done higher. Right, someone asked me when to pull a plant and how to fix it to the pole. I should have probably waited until I was pulling something on camera to talk about it. And no doubt I will talk about it again when that occurs. But I don't think I'm pulling anything for some time. As I say, I'm, I'm repotting a lot of crawlers today. So when should you re when should you pull a plant and ha how essentially how do you fix it? Now I'll tell you straight up, guys, how I fix it. Do I have it here? Literally at the minute I've been using just twine, literally twine. And what I tend to do is I attach it to the pole and put it in the substrate and float it above, you know, like a bed of substrate, and then pot it that way. That's much easier. A person helping you is even easier. There are, there's some hacks you can do anyway to make it easy for yourself. But in terms of attaching it, literally, you don't need anything fancy. Now, I do have somewhere, I have the most beautiful Velcro tape that you can get off Amazon, actually. Um, do I have any around here? I'm sure I must do. I do, but can I get to it? Let me pull it off this ghost, and then I will have to put it on the ghost again because it's going to fall all over. Two minutes. This stuff, can't really hold it up to the camera, but it is... It's basically Velcro, but it only sticks to one side of itself. So this side here is really soft. And that's the side that would touch, you know, the stem or the petiole or whatever of your, of your plant, right? And this side just becomes Velcro on itself like that. So it just goes round um, the pole and you get a big roll of tape 
take this stuff off Amazon and you cut it yourself. So I've just been using this on a little pole and I normally go for an overlap that's about five centimeters, which I think they actually tell you anyway to make sure that you can overlap it. You absolutely don't want to be doing that with like a tiny overlap that's that big because it's not going to it's not going to stay. Let me just put this back. So I use that and I have used that and I would use that in a household environment. But in here, honestly, stuff happens. Can you imagine the money I would spend on this tape if I, you know, did everything in here with that? It would be a little bit silly, wouldn't it? I do love it. I think it's awesome, but you don't need to. You can just use this. Just use anything you like. Honestly, twine anything. And you can always do that. And then when you do get a hold of some nice tape, use that. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't really matter. Use whatever comes to hand. I've used um, the really horrible, proper twiny sort of twine, like the brownie, rough, coarse kind of twine. I've used it all. I've got loads of poles over here. People ask me what poles I use. Honestly, I don't actually know. I think I buy my poles at the minute from garden centers just because I feel like Amazon just fucks me around too much. Um, but I just use any old thing. This looks like obviously coir fiber and it's just got some sort of clear, I don't know what you even call it, clear cord around it. Obviously that's coming off, so that's not great. But again, they're just cheap. They're probably made by the garden center, I would imagine. It's nothing special really. And there's loads of different things you can use. Just use what you, just use what you're gonna use. Use what you're gonna use. Do what you gotta do. There's nothing insanely intricate that you have to do. Don't get caught up in that. Just do whatever you want. The interesting part in this, and the part that I think is of use to you, is when to do it. Oh, do I have any climbers to show you? Because I just feel like this is better when I show you. Take it from me, and next time I do, you know, a polling video or whatever, I will, I'll say this again in a much more succinct way. But essentially, the best time I think to re, to, sorry, to poll your plant is either when you've got a lot of aerials going on and you've got a few leaves, obviously. I wouldn't do it straight away, but you can if you want. There's no rule. Um, when you've got a few aerials going, or imagine this climbs for a second when the plant is climbing upwards and you, you know you've got a bit of stem going up again this is a crawler it's not going to work the leaves start getting a little bit smaller as the plant climbs and it's got aerials when that happens that's absolutely the time to pull it as soon as you see that plant standing on its own two feet and it's getting smaller that's a good time to pull it if I could pick up my big monstera that I repotted two weeks ago, I would show you that. Because if you notice that in that video, it was getting bigger, 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 bigger. And it had holes in the leaves like that guy. And then all of a sudden, as soon as it got some height on it and it started to move a little bit and twist, the leaves got smaller again. I think they know, it sounds so stupid, but they know when they haven't got any support and you can see it happening. They'll either start leaning or getting a little bit, you know, kind of thing. Or a lot of time the leaves will get a little bit smaller because it's almost to me like the plant knows it can't balance if it keeps getting bigger and bigger. So I don't know if it's like a, not a defense mechanism, but it's just adapting to not being able to do that, right? So my number one bit of advice for you is pull it when you see those leaves getting smaller. Now that doesn't actually have to be whether it has aerials or not. Now, aerials help, and if you have aerials that adhere to a pole, you're going to get great results very quickly, right? And if you guys have plants at home, I know you know what I'm on about, basically. Hang on, where's my straw? Did I just pour all the stuff out? One moment, guys. Where is, seriously, where's the straw? Where the fuck is the straw? It has to be here. It got packaged, right? Dude. Ah, found it. But that is the best time, yes. So if you if you have aerial roots and they adhere to the pole, you will get great results very quickly. You don't need it. And I say that, I think my glorious upstairs, that's a climber, that's a hybrid of Philodendron Gloriosum and Philodendron Melnochrysum. That one starts sizing up even without having aerials into the pole. You don't have to have the roots adhering to the pole. It helps. There's nothing you can really do to get that. You could try bagging up where roots would come out of and stuff like that. A lot of people have methods for that. I'm not too much of a fan of that unless it's for propagation purposes and I'll tell you why. I feel like if you don't have the humidity to get those aerials in the first place, unless those aerials are then gonna go into lecker and become water roots or something else. If you're doing that to just try and get aerials to adhere to a pole, if you aren't getting that prior, I would argue your humidity may not be good enough to sustain those aerials anyway. And it might be a little bit of a waste of time for you. Um, that is me guessing on experience. I've never tried that method before because I've never needed to. Here I just boost my humidity so that it's just ridiculous. I, I think we're at about 70%. I haven't checked in a while, so I personally wouldn't do that, but I don't think you need to. I think you can get height out of it without, so my best advice, sorry it's long, wait till you've either got some aerials or some height on the plant, but definitely if you see a leaf start to get smaller, you can look at it and go, oh, okay, it probably should be on a pole. Pole it if you can. Try not to leave it too long, 
I've done that too many times and I've had some gnarly ass plants. If anyone remembers my golden dragon narrow form that's upstairs, I've had to tie that plant, right, to one of the legs of my shelves and point it at the window so it actually sits back up again because it got so tall and so rooty, it started just growing like that along the ground. It had no choice, so then it's got like a mad curl on it. So before I pull it, I'm actually trying to manually straighten it out and get its get itself back, and then I will pull it. But that's a nightmare, and you don't want to be doing that. So if you can keep on top of that sort of shit, I would, to be quite honest, definitely. But that's basically the long and short of it. That's what I would do, and that's me telling you... I've done that wrong again. That's me telling you without having anything climby and shit like that. Now, you can do it with ties and stuff, by the way. I've mentioned this a couple of weeks ago, you know, large form monster and, and doing that, and it can be a bit tricky. It works, but might not hold fast forever. Right, oh, that went in nicely, didn't it? Right. Though I will speed through these a little bit more. Why? Why? What's wrong with this? Why do I feel that... Then this, That's not right. Why is it not right? Why? Tell me. I need to know what the tea is here. So what I don't like is this doesn't stand properly and it's obviously something stupid I've done. That is so much longer. Why? The only reason that can be too long is if this isn't right. Isn't it? Like what else could it possibly fucking be? Like, that doesn't go any further in, you know? There's nothing I can do there, guys. That's weird. That's weird. I'm Seriously, I'm telling you now, I've done everything I can there. Maybe that goes all the way up. Maybe that's just got to be pushed in. Have I just got a fucky one? What I'm going to do is, I'm going to take that, I'm going to switch it. I'm going to switch it with the one from a different pot, and then we will find out what the tea is, because I don't understand this at all. Like, what is the difference? Ah, I see what the problem is. So, the problem is actually in the top part of the nozzle, and I can see it here when you put those together. <laughs> Wait a bit, what? There's a couple of things wrong here. This looks too far out now. Wait, what? Are these just, is this just a bad batch? All of these are made weird. So that looks the same now, but that means it's gonna fit the same. Is it the pot? Dude, make it make sense. Make it make sense. It's gonna be the same. Maybe it's the fucking pot, you know? So that went in really easy. You know what? I'm fucking done giving, <sighs> Listen, I've put so many of these pots together. I can't tell you, maybe 50. I probably put 50 of these together in my time and I've never had this problem and it's happening consistently. And now we need to get to the bottom of it. Now I'm too curious. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to swap this out and see if this is the fucking issue. I'll tell you what, I don't get it. Maybe it's a batch problem. No, it's still lower. It's still fucking lower. Right, I'm fucking wedging it now, literally. I've tried to actually pull this plastic up further and I've got it to a point where it's nearly there. I'm kind of ramming it up. That might have been the problem. But I must point out, guys, I only took it out as is. Do you know what I mean? I didn't change it. That's better now. Let me put it in another one. Sorry, I know this is like the most boring video ever, but I need, I need to know now. Like, I'm invested. I need to know. For science, right? Oh, yes. Did you hear that? I did. Right. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened. There's something not quite right with these top halves, but I've never had to do that before. I almost had to pull them too far out to get them in. That has categorically never happened. That's fucking weird. Never mind. So we all learned something here today. Jesus. Let me just pull this off. Oh my God, it's gonna fray. Are you kidding me? Oh no, stop it. I think I've had this a lot longer. One, it's dusty. Because what I said about before, about pulling these off, guess what? And I can't get it off. Guys, you couldn't write this shit, could you, honestly? No, literally. Literally. I can't. Why? 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 Listen, that can stay as it is, that one. Right. I think let's do Silver Boy because it's really pretty and I think you guys deserve to look at something nice because all you've stared at for the last God knows how long is pot. So we'll do that. Let me get another this drawn. Um, oh, this is a good one. This is a bit more involved. So we'll do this one. And it is a bit meatier, but I, we should probably get into something meaty by this point. So I actually had, and I know people have asked about this before, but I feel like there's been a sudden surge in the question. 
and I thought that was really odd. Now, I've been keeping up with the internet, but I've been doing it for things like scams and stuff for Dish the Dirt, right? So I've been on the Facebook groups, on the Facebook groups, how old do I sound? I've been on Facebook groups a little bit more, and I've been trying to keep up with the Joneses a little bit more than I, than I used to, because for a long time, guys, I actually left these groups. I left nearly every group because <sighs> people have some really weird rules when it comes to shit talking people and so certain things are allowed and certain things aren't and I'm not going to go into it but someone could write a post about another member of a group and get banned for it but people can write the exact same posts about me and it's fine and that's like a whole conversation you could have about on one hand yes I'm just like you know just like anyone else I'm just a person on the other hand I'm like a public figure and blah 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 and I get that it's a, a big gray area anyway that's not the point so for a long time I actually left a lot of these groups there was obviously the bullying thing and some shit like that and all of that, right? We don't need to go into it. That's not the point. So I've been trying to keep up with the Joneses a little bit more recently. Let me just grab this. I'll empty him really quickly because he's going to be very noisy. Let's have a little look at him, shall we? Look at him, he's pretty. I know you can't see him, but I just want to have a look at some of this because this was dangling out of the pot into a lot of sludge and I want to maybe trim them a little bit. So yeah, so I've been on Facebook groups a little bit more to keep up with the Joneses, but not necessarily for that. It has been more for, well, a lot of Congo stuff and chemically induced and all that. I've kind of been filtering it a little bit for that purpose. But for some odd reason, guys, I've had a surge in people asking me uh, to talk about people flipping plants? My question to you is, whoever's um, asked it, a few of you did, literally about 30% of you were asking about it. It was like really quite a lot, really, for, for the same question. My question is, is that because it's spring, do you think? Or, you know, like I, I was really kind of curious as to why people were coming out with that. Has it been like some kind of bloody scandal that I don't know about? I don't know. I'm going to assume for the purposes of not being able to get your feedback at the time of filming this, that it's probably the time of year. I feel like a lot of people are starting to import again straight away or uh, obviously the people that aren't importing and flipping, a lot of people are selling off some stuff that they either grew over winter and they want to make some space or they propagate anyway or whatever have you. Selling season is kind of upon us now, I would say. I think end of March, early April time is like right now we're kind of in spring, right? Whether it's spring in an actual sense or spring in a selling sense, I would say we're in spring in a selling sense. So things are probably going to start picking up now. I've been meaning to make a video on how to tell if people are flipping for some time. The question wasn't how to tell, it was just, you know, talk about people flipping plants. And oh, they, there's so many facets to it, isn't there? there? There really is. A lot of people do it because they need the cash, but they shouldn't. It shouldn't really affect whether you do it or not. In my opinion, you shouldn't flip. I can't tell people what to do. I'm not out here telling people what to do, but I don't condone flipping personally, right? Um, and that's just because I know from experience, um, plants aren't likely to survive. And it's actually one of the same reasons why I have a guarantee on my plants as well. No, I'm not flipping plants and sending them out, but it's the whole, though the reason flipping is dangerous, right? Let's, let's, let's rewind a little bit. The reason flipping is dangerous for the plant, it's not really dangerous for you, it's dangerous for your wallet, the reason flipping is dangerous for the plant is because it's a lot of stress. And with a lot of plants, you bring them in. Sometimes stress is immediately apparent when you open the box. Sometimes it isn't. And I'm sure we've all experienced it in some form. It can happen, I would say anywhere like 10 days, somewhere around that. And that's actually why I have my guarantee. Because that's me literally acknowledging that even a plant with great roots sold from whoever, it can tank in that amount of time. I've had plants rot in the post and they weren't rotted when they've left here. Do you know what I mean? So many things can happen in the post I can't even describe. I've had people open up plants and be like, listen, this is cooked. What the fuck, man? And it's like, right, shit, how did that happen? And there's a whole process to figure that out. Or the plant that's like, hey, I just want to let you know, I've opened this and it was absolutely amazing for three days and all of a sudden it's done a downturn. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes that's the person that might have done something, not necessarily knowingly, I'm not saying that, just, you know, an accidental thing. Maybe they haven't watered enough or, or whatever, they haven't rehabbed it. Or sometimes it's just, it just fucking happens. Sensitive plants. Some plants are great, some aren't. Plants like this probably wouldn't think two seconds about sending out. Some of the anthuriums, they tend to be okay. Variegated stuff, it's a cross finger situation nearly all the time. Um, it, just different plants are different, right? But my guarantee is it, it, I'm trying to acknowledge that and I'm acknowledging that shit can happen in the post. Now the problem with flipping is if shit happens in the post and you see something being sold on Facebook and you're not sure if it's been flipped, Already, if it is being flipped, I can tell you that that is a plant that doesn't necessarily show damage straight away. There are many signs, if you can tell. Again, I'd probably make it a full 
video on that and I think I've got a plan lying around somewhere where I start doing it. Again, on the video list to do. Um, this Dish the Dirt's had me completely just way behind on normal content, as you can probably imagine. So there are, there are ways to spot it and things like that and I am against it because, hang on, I'm going to have to get some pawn here. Mm. Hang on. I am against it because the likelihood of someone buying a plant um, and basically not getting a plant out of it because it dies or goes under such severe damage, you're dealing with a really weak specimen for like nine months out of a year. And before you know it, you're like, listen, this shit ain't for me. I'm getting rid of my plants. I can't, I can't do this. Do you know what I mean? I think it's taking advantage of, of um, consumers from, from buyers doing that. And I do see people flipping. This is what you're all asking me. I know this is what you probably want to know. Can I just say something before we continue? This plant is so long, right? It's already here at the edge of the pot. There is not a lot I can do about that unless I was going to cut it. So I'm going to plant him all the way to the back and we're going to lift him up a little bit and he's just going to have to crawl straight over the pot. This will uh, firm up, by the way, he's just had to grow in really, really weird in a big shelf. You can see that's done the same thing. He will push forward, don't worry. I know he looks a bit like, what the fuck? But we're just going to try and support him. There'll probably be a lot of lecker mounded up here to make sure that we support him. Anyway, so yes, I see people flipping all the fucking time. <laughs> I say all the time. I, I see things that I think are flipped and I can't guarantee things are flipped. Obviously, I see them on Facebook. However, I don't know if people know this about me and about this shop, but some plants I can almost actually guarantee you they are flipped. And I'll explain what I mean. Just let me get some substrate in here. But I don't really want to leave him without anything in here because he's a little bit, you know? It's a professional term that, by the way. So, I'm in a really unique position where I kind of know who's flipping. Now, it depends. Depends on, on who, kind of thing. I'll explain what I mean. I'm not making this very clear, am I? So, I don't know if people know this about me and the shop or, or whatever have you, but I am a distributor for one of the big Ecuadorian wholesalers. So, what does that mean? Well, I do business with this Ecuadorian wholesaler because, well, they actually approached us. I think it was just before Brexit was coming in. So this was, what was this? That was that last year, January last year or something. I can't remember. Um, if you don't know what Brexit was, it was a, it's a shit show, basically. Um, we're not part of the EU anymore. Trade is very difficult. We used to be able to send stuff, for example, to the EU without any phytos or anything. And we certainly didn't need a phyto to bring it in from the EU and stuff like that. Now we do. It just shit got a lot harder. And I know a lot of UK shops know that. It's just been a shit time, has it not, for everyone involved. It's just shit. But anyway, we were, we were very adept at importing by that point. And I don't think, I don't know how many shops were doing that. I'll leave it at that. I don't know how many shops were doing that before Brexit, right? I don't know how many shops are doing it after Brexit, but that's another thing. Because you can still chance it, I suppose, if you're willing. So yeah, we were approached by this wholesaler at the beginning or the end of 2020, so the beginning of 2021. And what that means is basically we get, when this wholesaler sells to anybody in the UK, any shop, any private seller, any anybody, right? If you're a private seller, you're also a shop, by the way. Just, it is what it is. What happens is they ship them over and they come here. And then we send them on to basically the people that ordered. Now, I know things are flipped because I, I don't think the, the shops ordering know this. I don't know. I have no idea. But I've been watching some notorious flippers in the UK for a while now because when the shipment of plants comes here, it, and, and I mean, there's, there's several boxes. There might be 20 coffin size boxes of plants. Obviously this, it just fills this whole thing up. A lot of the time, that's why I'm not filming here. There's normally shit here. If it's been a time when there's been a big import come in, right? A lot of shit happens, tends to be here because this is like free space. All of those plants come here. We then do all of the packaging and we post and we send them on. Now, if it's huge orders, they tend to stay in the same box that they came through with the wholesaler and because it's all in there. If it's smaller boxes, they come out in my boxes. Now, if you're someone that's bought from this wholesaler that hasn't bought a lot of plants, very small number, then you probably would have seen their our boxes. Or if they're just nondescript cargo boxes, they're also our boxes. So there might have been a point in time where a few people were a bit confused as to why they're getting boxes with my logo on it when they haven't bought from me. But that is essentially why. So we are a distributive for that 
company, right? But what it means is, and what I don't think a lot of shops realize is, we get those plants in, but we also get the list of who it is, where they are, what they've bought, the quantities, everything. And half the time, when we have to repackage them out of the big boxes and put them in smaller boxes, we get to see what the plants are and what condition they're in, or whether they have roots and all sorts. And I can't tell you how many times I've remembered a specific plant that someone is holding up on Facebook a day after I know the packages got there. And I know this because of tracking. Sometimes I've seen on Facebook and I've said to Ben, do you remember that plant, that exact plant? Because there'll be like a special mark on it or something like that. And he'll be like, oh my fucking God, they're selling that already. And I'm going, yeah, 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 yeah. The amount of times I have seen that occur would surprise you. It would surprise you. And all they do is they simply say, it's been in my care for ages. And half the time, a lot of the time it's anthurium, and a lot of the time there's not a single root on the trunk. Now, anthuriums are pretty unique in that sense. They seem to be able to kind of handle it. A lot of the time, an anthurium can grow off a trunk with virtually no root. I don't understand it. It's black magic. It's not very safe, though. And we obviously send ours out with roots on. Sometimes it's a little bit more of a minimal root, but they go out with roots, right? They don't go out as just a trunk. I wouldn't. It's just, it's not safe. But I can tell you firsthand that people are literally flipping, and they are flipping not... Not within two weeks, not within a week, within not even probably 24 hours of the package getting to their house. Do you know why? Because I sent it there. Now, I'm not saying I remember every single plant because I don't, obviously. I'm not bloody clairvoyant, do you know what I mean? I don't, but I do, I do remember a lot. And once someone's flipped once, I know they're going to flip again. So some, some sellers, and this is not all sellers, and I'll get onto that in a minute. I'm not shitting on every seller in the UK, so please don't think that, and I will clarify that in a bit. But some sellers, if I see that they have flipped the plan, I'll just make a mental note, and then the next time I'll have a quick check over their order before it goes out. And then I usually watch, and then they will do it again every time, and there's, they, there's always some excuse for selling it, or it's just like, yeah, it's been in my care ages. It fucking hasn't. It fucking hasn't. It's been in your care 24 hours and you're selling it. And that, I think, is absolutely abhorrent. And this might come off as biased. That's fine. That's fine. I, I accept that. But I genuinely think on behalf of all shops that do it right, that's really unfair. And I think you're giving all plant shops a bad name when you do stuff like that. Even private sellers can kind of taint things for everyone. I say private sellers. Some of these people are private sellers. Some of them are shops. Um, but what I want to immediately preface that with is... Not every fucking shop in the UK is doing this, and I need to make a big thing about this because I don't want people to think that is the case, right? There's a, there's so many shops that do it right, guys, and I, I can I can see it's a good portion of them that are doing it right. So please don't sit there thinking, oh my God, literally don't want to buy plants from the UK now at all. I don't want to do that if you're in the UK or if they sell out of the UK or whatever. So many of them are doing it right. And I literally, from me to you, I know who you are. You know who you are. I absolutely commend you on doing that. And thank you for doing the right thing. And thank you for just giving a shit about what you're selling and giving people good products. That's why we do it, right? Otherwise, what would be the point? Because it's a very stressful job. I know that. Importing is horrible. And I, I think y you could talk a long time. Sorry, I know I've stopped repotting. <laughs> um, I'll probably just cut it short, to be honest. How long have we been going? Yeah, quite a long time. We'll cut this one short and I'll finish off the rest. You could talk a long time about the reasons why people flip, because you could argue some of it might be financial and they, they they know that they're flipping and they know it's wrong, but they might be doing it because they need the cash and they can't lose the money on that import. But I would suggest stop investing so much money in imports if that is honestly how it is for you. I don't, I don't think do that. I think there's other ways. I think propagate the plants you've got. At least you'll get better props, you know? Um, importing, even if it's through, you know, the method that this wholesaler is doing it, then... It, there's still risk there, you know. I do see a lot of plants that come through and some of them are looking shit and I'm like, oh, that's not good. You know, they've come bad. It does seem to be across the board, by the way. So, for example, if everyone's doing a big import from this um, distributor, wholesaler, I don't know what to call them, um, you know what I mean, from this big place in Ecuador, some of them will just inherently arrive bad, like, say, all the queens. I mean, that's a good example. A lot of them go to ship, right? It's also very flipped to plant a queen because of that reason, because they go to ship very quickly. But I don't think people get away with flipping it because the leaf goes too quick. And from sale to 
even sending it out, it's probably fucked. So you might be a bit safe with the queen. If it looks like a nice leaf, you might be all right. Um, nothing's guaranteed. But yes, yeah, sometimes you get stuff in, it's just like all of the philodendron chocos look like shit. All of the regals look like shit. Oh, all of these mags have come in beautiful. Oh, look at these plants. These are coming well, these haven't. I can see that from from looking at all of them anyway. So it's not a surefire way. And honestly, I understand, guys, I understand importing is hard. I understand there's a lot of loss. But what, what are we really achieving by spending money that some people will say they can't afford to lose on dead import, right? What is the point spending the money that you can't afford to lose and then flipping to make sure you get your money back? Because I'm saying this to you now, assuming that you have a genuine reason for doing it and you're not just an asshole, right? I'm saying that it's like it's one person, it's not. Do you see what I'm saying? Assuming that, and giving you the benefit of the doubt, and assuming that you have your own personal reasons, I would argue that that's not the best thing to be doing anyway. If 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 it's that brittle for you, I would recommend you build up a, a personal collection and you propagate from that. And if that's not quick enough, I don't know. I don't know, but I, I don't see any longevity in flipping. And I will do a video on how to spot a flip plant and I don't personally believe, I'm saying this before I plan the video, I don't personally believe it's something that anyone can try and work around. So if I give you guys tips at home, how to spot a flip plant and it's not guaranteed, but here's some signs that I would look out for, for example, I don't think it's something that sellers could then try and skirt around. I think we'd be safe. Because one of them is obviously lack of root. You know what I mean? And the roots that are there, they should be, if they're propagated with that person, given what medium they are, they should be a certain color and look a certain way and blah, 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 blah. Um, for example, this plant here was an import a fucking long time ago because I think it was about this big when we got it. And it's grown in a really weird way because it's just been sat there for ages. And you can tell it's grown funky. No supplier would send this either. In the case of this plant, because it's so fucking long. There's about six plants in there they would sell. They're not just going to sell one big one like this. Can't wait for this to grow forward, by the way. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of different ways to tell um, whether things are being flipped or not. And I will do that video, but if you want me to talk about flipping specifically, I see y'all doing it. It's not all sellers. I'm not tarring with that brush. I absolutely commend sellers that do it properly and take it on the chin. And I think you are some of the sellers that will still be around in three years. Do you know what I mean? Um, because you will have a good enough brand to stay around. And that's something these other shops, private sellers aren't thinking about for reasons I can only assume are to make a quick book. Because if you are thinking about genuinely providing good services, good products, good business, good everything, and you want your business to flourish, forgive the pun, then you are thinking about doing it for the long haul. And you know that you need a good, you need a good base for your brand. And if you're flipping, then you're not going to get it. Again, not telling everyone what to do. It's not my choice. It's not my brand. I don't flip. Maybe you do. Maybe you've got your reasons. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I couldn't possibly. I'm just one person. But you guys are asking me about flipping and I'm telling you that at least in the UK sense, I can concrete tell you it's happening. Not like maybe, not like I think not. It looks like it is happening and it's happening a lot. Um, just be careful out there. Again, if you want that video on how to spot a flip plant, I'll do my best to make it. It won't be foolproof, obviously. There, there are many things. It depends on what plant it is and all sorts. But I'll certainly try and make that video for you. Um, I will leave that here today. I don't think I had any other questions. Let me just read out what I did have. Um, Lekka versus Pon was something I had, but I wanted to do a video on that as well. I know, sorry, I know. But like literally, I think I could probably tell you what plants do better in it and what plants do better in something else. So I think I've got a handle on that. I want to do a video on it. It'd be more useful for you having a video on that because I know that not everyone watches these, right? What I'm going to do is, guys, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, I'm going to feed the ones I've done and then I'm going to speed pot a couple of others maybe on camera just so you at least get to see something, right? So I'm going to feed these real quick. How many liters? Is it just five again? Please tell me it's five because I can't lift ten very well, you know, for reasons that I have explained in the last video. Where's my pipette? Right, okay. So I need five mil because I have five liters, don't I? Tell me I have five liters. Do I have five liters? Yes, I do. Okay, just have to make sure there. Mix it round. Not that it really needs to, but it's fine. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Right. Okay. So this happens, doesn't it? I start talking because I'm such a bloody blabbermouth. And then everything's just a fucking issue. I'll get Silver Boy back up. Put him in a pot. An older pot as it happens, but hey ho, it's a little bit misshapen. It's obviously got squished at some point. Feed him too. Give him some nice feed. 
pour a little bit over the top because I know that the substrate's a bit dry. That'll be enough for now. Like that. He's going to look great when he's uh, not pointed that way. That way he looks beautiful. Look at that. Just so you know what you're actually looking at, by the way. That way he's gorgeous. Um, but he needs to grow this way. We'll see how he goes. So for the rest of this, guys, I'm going to essentially just put some music on. Uh, I might speed it up a bit so it doesn't take too long. I'm just going to pop the rest of these up because it's going to take a little while. So I'm going to do that now.
And I think we're done. The raw footage timer on my camera, sorry, that's like massively off work, has gone to quite literally one hour, 45 minutes. Obviously a lot of that will be sped up for you. I thought, we, you know, the video was just getting too long. You may have seen me actually toying up between this one and this one to choose. Now, I like this plant a lot. It's very, very beautiful. But there was a tag stuck in this one that basically said that it was from this guy behind me. And although he looks like he's climbing, which is very odd, maybe he's just a little bit too young, I really, really wanted to have a copy of him upstairs because I can see how amazing this guy is, right? I really, really want a copy of him upstairs. So that's actually what swung it for me. I've got a whole bunch of other shit that I've reported that I'm not going to pick up because I've now fed everything. So things are a lot more heavier, but I've got a whole bunch of shit. What I'll probably do is I'm done for the day now at the shop. I'm going to put all my setup away. I'm going to put the grow lights back in front of the wall. And what I will probably do is everything I've potted. I'm going to sit it down here in front of the wall and hopefully all of those crawlers will try and point out at the grow lights and hopefully they won't get any damage in between now I'm doing the studio and hopefully they will start to grow straight forward. So for example, this stuff, this might just be a little bit better presenting like that by the time that I get to put it upstairs. Same thing goes for a lot of these other crawlers that have kind of grown almost like the wrong way around. So hopefully that will fix a lot of them. The ones I didn't pick, there's one Gloriosum there and there's that and that's it. Everything else I've potted. I'm aware that they're kind of nearly the same plant. I just have this weird vision that a ton of crawlers is going to look good. And honestly, if it gets further down the line in the studio and we don't like it, we think, hey, Kaylee, you've gone a bit too far, then we'll just change them out. You know, that's the beauty of having a plant shop, I guess. I could just take this back out of the pot, for example, put it back down here, grow it to sell or grow it to keep anyway, and then pot something else up and put it up there. Thank you very much for watching today's video. I know it's been a long one, but hopefully you enjoyed the chat and it's very chilled. I know a lot of people say that, you know, this finishes off my week or it starts off my weekend. So I hope you had a chill time anyway. And this is all with prep to doing up the studio. So you should see that soon-ish, I would hope. Anyway, if you like this video, please leave a like down below. It really, really helps. And if you'd like to see any more of my content, it doesn't just have to be Repot With Me, of course, then please take a look at my channel and please feel free to subscribe. That way you never miss another video that I do, even though I do them at the same time every week. But still, if you could subscribe, that would really help me out. Thank you very much for watching today, guys. If you've got any comments on anything I said, please, as usual, place them down below. And until then, I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.